Do you know this feeling? The feeling that it's never enough? That you are not enough? Show of hands, who knows the feeling of not exercising enough? <laughs> Good, I'm not alone. <laughs> the feeling of not scratching off enough of that to-do list at the end of the day? Hmm? Also the majority? Or of not spending enough time with your family, your friends, or yourself? Oh, even more. Well, I knew I wasn't alone with this feeling, with a whole generation, as Brené Brown once put it spot on, that goes to bed in the evening with the last thought in their mind before drifting off to sleeping, oh, I didn't get enough done. And the first thought in the morning before even opening our eyes is, oh, I didn't get enough sleep. And this comes so many times from people just like myself, living in this day and age, in a so-called first world country, not living in a war zone, many of us being protected by social securities, even by democratic laws. What is still missing? Why is it never enough? Exactly this feeling of inadequacy was simmering inside of me for years. And at one point I said, enough. And this enough, with a big fat exclamation mark, meant for me particularly, enough to the way I was structuring my life merely around my work, my career, my status. And a few years back, I went on a quest, a very personal quest, to my very personal future of work. I thought there must be a different way of this promise of life and work going hand in hand with each other. And in this year-long, month-long, and sometimes still very present emancipation process, at one point, I remember it dawned on me, and I did something that back then and now seems absolutely logical to me, and yet still seems radical to some. What I did was, instead of trying to adjust my time, my lifetime merely around my work, I started to adjust my work around my time. What did I do concretely? First, I went on part-time in my corporate job, on radical part-time, as it was called, on a three-day basis, and I did that in a job-sharing model. I slowly started volunteer working in my community. I also became a so-called sidepreneur, offering thought-provoking salons, some coaching, some consulting. And throughout that time, I sometimes just was a woman, a mother, a daughter, a friend, a girlfriend, with all the needs, but also the tasks that come along those roads as well. And with this labeled non-linear life of mine, in the past years, I got invited to talk about the future of work more publicly. And I increasingly realized that in those public conversations, a key component is always missing. So many of us, and I include myself, keep talking about the role our work plays in our lives. But hardly anyone talks about the role our work plays in solving the world's biggest problems. I believe we need to link the two. And I believe we can only link the two by fundamentally reinventing work. Because work is what most of us spend most of our waking time on, on a global scale. And for most of us, work currently only equals a paying job. And yes, you did hear me right. I did say the world's biggest problems. A lot of experts suggest, and I also firmly believe, that the key to reaching a more just and therefore more peaceful, a more sustainable, even a more digitally future-proof tomorrow, is extremely closely linked to a more holistic definition of work, how much time we attribute towards it, and how we measure the value it creates. So what I brought with me are three starting points, three perspectives of how I believe we are indeed capable of fundamentally reinventing work in a positive way, on an individual, on a corporate, and on a political level. So the first level starts with each and every one of us. It starts with us finding a new sweet spot between the new work movement's mantra, what do I really, really want? And on the other hand, probably the most important question of all time right now, what does the world really, really need from us? And from what I've learned, we will not find the answers to such vital questions in our current work paradigm. Because we all make the same mistakes over and over again, even though it's 2022. We try to answer those crucial questions from the loudest of our inner voice. That voice that was most likely primed throughout its entire life to be a performance maniac. I lovingly call my performance maniac my superego. 
just listen to it. Maybe you can relate. <clears throat> Ellie, you need three more coffee. You need to suck it up and lean in more. Well, throughout my personal catharsis, I slowly started allowing other parts of my personality to have a say. The intellectual Ellie, the melancholic Ellie, the Greek Ellie comes in very handy next to my German half. Or, God forbid, the quiet and lazy Ellie. Only by embracing this inner diversity that each and every one of us has, I believe we will find new solutions to those vital questions, what we need and what the world needs. Because this working world we keep talking about is changing fundamentally. With this fourth industrial revolution we're currently in fully unfolded, a major part of what we call paying jobs today will be gone in the next decades. And a lot of research predicts the new jobs developed will not nearly compensate for the losses. And as scary and as uncomfortable those outlooks might be, and they are, they can activate each and every one of us today to explore what other work is there for me and all my talents to do. How else can I use my time? What other value can I create? Not just to enrich myself and my career, but everyone around me. Now, before I move on how to talk, uh, how to use this personal realization in the um, corporate and political sphere, here's a little disclaimer. Well, actually, it's a really big disclaimer. Because if you followed my drift up to this point, if my story might have sparked a bit of inspiration to change even, that's amazing. But if it did, it also shows you something else. It shows you how privileged you are. Because let's be honest, there is a big pink elephant in the room and attached to my story so far. Me and probably many of us in this room who study at a prestigious university here in Germany would be able, are able to change the way we work, restructure our time, we create value in life because we can afford to change. This is why I believe we need to focus the conversation on how we build and manage companies, how we incentivize and economize even. So the second lever of how I believe we can fundamentally reinvent work is the corporate lever. And with corporate, I do literally mean corporate. I don't mean the fancy startups, I don't mean smaller companies, I mean those big mid-sized to large corporations those who have massive impact on capital, on markets, on people. Imagine with me such a company where sharing a job between its employees of different gender, age, ethnicity is the absolute normal. Imagine how this company then would naturally become an active driver of gender or socioeconomic growth in its society. Marginalized groups, especially at the decision-making tops of firms, such as women or single parents, would find a timely structure where they can actually bring their full potential to the table and not be too tired for it. Imagine with me such a company with this working environment, bringing us new role models, bringing a more diverse set of opinions. Even those long, long established sea levels out there would get a more representative view of their markets without having to hire any of those expensive consultants a new form of leadership would become inherent where giving trust and giving responsibility is innate, where ego becomes an actual burden and not a winner. Imagine with me a company that loudly advocates for flexible working structures beyond parental leave, making it accessible to all employees, making them more motivated and stay on board longer. Sounds desirable? Great then let's make flexible working the new default. I don't mean just those home office and hybrid work discussions we had since the pandemic. I don't mean tolerating some stigmatized models like mine. I mean flexible work in every shape and form out there, becoming part of every business case. I know it sounds wild, but to a lot of experts, and certainly for me, this is one of the strongest and currently most underestimated levers for a company on their serious way to a new, to a more socially just, to a more diverse way of working. Whilst it is, by the way, nurturing exactly those human skills that will differentiate us from the working powers of the machines. And you know what the best part is? Many of us can be a driver of this change, especially as corporate career monkeys. In your next job interview, in your next performance evaluation, we're so used to negotiating our salary. Let's get used to negotiating our time. 
Now, before I move on to the third and last lever of how I believe we are indeed capable of fundamentally reinventing work, here's another disclaimer. Why don't companies change the way we work, we structure our time? Why don't they tie social inequalities directly to their actions? Because there is a sea full of research proving how much a company can profit in changing in such ways. But all those profits are long-term wins, and they are currently always defeated by short-term goals. Short-term regarding competitiveness, productivity, shareholder value, of course, or the underlying alleged saver of it all, growth. The endless growth story. This is why my last point has to go out to governments, political institutions, but really us society as a whole. Us who set the frameworks, the parameters, the metrics of how individuals and companies operate in systems together. Imagine with me a system that reinvents work in a way where products from a sustainable, from an ethical production chain are more affordable, not less, as it currently is, because market reward mechanisms ensure biodiversity farming, ensure true cost accounting, ensure that the cost of unethical behavior are carried by those who cause them and not by society as a whole. Imagine with me a system that reinvents work in a way where giving time to your local community or to solidary activism is just as rewarded as your contribution to a paying job. And with that, your retirement income being just as dependent on the social capital you've created throughout life as the economic one. Imagine with me a system that reinvents work in a way where care work, no matter if it's done institutionalized or at home, where cultural and creative work are just as subsidized and supported as healthcare is. I know it sounds wild, but it follows the exact same logic lawmakers of at least most developed countries have with regards to healthcare. It's acknowledging the positive mental, physical, emotional, spiritual impact care work, creative output, cultural output has on contributing citizens in a society. I would love not to wait until the next pandemic, until it dawns on entire governments, what work is really essential, what job is really system relevant, system relevant, as we started phrasing it in Germany. And no, I'm not saying we're supposed to embark to socialist utopia. With the right frameworks, with the right incentives and mechanisms and parameters in place, how value is measured, finally quality over quantity, I believe everything else will follow, just like everything else follows the growth story now. Because these systems we're working in did not fall from the sky, they were man-made. They were literally man-made, by the way. Meaning we can remake them again, maybe just human-made this time. Imagining and, more importantly, creating those human-made systems, reinventing work, is up to us. It's up to us individually, in companies, and politically. Most of what I just said, well, uh, first of all, my friends told me to kill my darlings, but I cannot and I will not talk about some privileged individual solution for structural problems anymore. And more importantly, most of what I just said is not even new. There are amazing researchers, scientists, economists out there who have very feasible post-growth economy strategies from equilibrium economy to steady state economy to economy for the common good to donut economy, we have solutions. We can start today. What I'm adding is I'm coming from a place of experience, how it is to have reinvented my work. And it gave me the privilege and the freedom to become a better self, a better companion, a better citizen. Now it's for you to do the same. Go out and make reinventing work a priority. Make it a core demand towards yourself, your closest allies, your further surroundings, your employers, your governments. So we finally start working towards what's essential. Because otherwise, it will never be enough. And I don't mean enough for you, I don't mean enough for me. I mean enough for a more peaceful, for a more sustainable, for a more future-proof tomorrow for everyone on this connected planet. Thank you.